also I wanted to just do a video about kind of my favourite pedal. I wanted to start this video by doing something you could follow along with. There's longer bit to the video where you could do other things. But first of all, kind of when you start this thing, there's a few different views. Um, and to start with, we'll start in this view here. So this is called Stomp View. And if you press View, you can go between Edit and this kind of Play View Stomp Mode. Anyway, so, and you should be in Snapshot 1. So Snapshots is something we'll use when we build this preset. But here's the general gist. We're going to start and we're going to put together an amp and cab. So I'm going to start off with an amp that I'm pretty sure you will like. This is the derailed Ingrid. This is based on a train wreck. Now we're going to set uh, this drive to 2.5. We'll set the bass to 7, mids to 5, treble to 5. Take the presence down to 2.5. And then there's a bright switch at the end, which I'm going to turn on. So we've got another 7 blocks which we can use. So move along to here and you press this button to open up the block list or model list whatever you want to call it we'll open up cab uh, single and I'm going to use the 4x12 Cali V30 now you see you've got mic choices here um, a bunch of different mic choices let's go for a 4038 ribbon and you've got mic distance here I like to take that down to as close as it can get and reflections is our room sound, I'll turn that up. So now we've got an amp, we've got a cab. And then I'll put in stereo delay at the end. So something like the transistor tape is a really nice one. If we press this button, we can change to be assigned to this tap, which is useful. So I'm gonna put it to be quarter notes feedback you know what these things do in general these are like based on real world controls i'll set our mix down to 20 percent and then i'm going to add at the end a nice reverb stereo dynamic plate set our decay up higher again these are things that i've got individual videos on um but just try these settings for now and see how you get on with them uh so 20 percent mix now if we press save press view and action together and we can save this we can use whatever name you like and now we've got now you could change an IR here if you wanted to um, the way that you load IRs is you go into the HX edit software and you load them into these IR slots and you can select them in this way you've got low cut high cut mix and level let's just leave that as it was though and what I want to do is assign a drive pedal at the start here um, again these are things that I've got individual videos on this is a boss SD1 and what you can do is select the block that you want and you just assign it by uh, holding or kind of pressing on the foot switch that you want it to be on so now you can see we've got uh, drive and we've got delay if we want it okay so that's kind of some very basics uh, if we wanted to add some more modulation um, we've got options uh, once these things go grey like this it means you're running out of DSP within the preset more on that later um, let's just clear that block um, so if we move this OD to here we could add for instance a mono tremolo here and that could be cool set the intensity and speed fairly low um, but you see we've kind of run out of foot switches so we got potentially uh, too many effects for for the amount of foot switches we've got and I don't want the tremolo and uh, delay to always be on so one of the things that I like to use if we just press save again if we come out of this view we press across you've got presets again presets and then there's this thing called snapshots in the helix so 
what I like to do is come into here and we can press view. Uh, this is our play view and again our edit view. But these snapshots can control what is bypassed and what is not. So in this way we could create kind of three settings um, as such where this one is just clean. This one we got tremolo and delay. And then this one we got uh, overdrive and delay. So that's really quite powerful. Um, as I say, if you just go to the snapshot where you want these things, you can press this button to bypass them or, or turn them on. And in that way, we kind of now got three tones available. Um, so you've got your clean. Or we got our drive. Or we got our tremolo and delay. pretty cool. So that's I think a really simple pleasing starting point. The other thing to be aware of is that you could change any of these parameters as well per snapshot. Um, so you could have you know the delay for instance could have a different setting when you've got the drive on. So for instance if I go here and I set the mix I want it to be 15% when I've got the drive on. We go to the mix control, hold in this knob and start to turn, not like that, don't hold it in too long, uh, as such, and you see this starts to go white, and then we have this parameter is being controlled by snapshots, as you can see. So you can have the mix change between snapshots, so in this one with the tremolo, <laughs> As I say, you can set that up to be basically any of these parameters could be different per snapshot. And equally, you've got a gate here. And when I've got more driven tones, I like to turn a gate on. Um, so as you navigate to the output, you go to the input. On this gate, we're going to press in and turn. Now it's on for this snapshot. For this snapshot, I want it to be off. And this one off too. So you now see in snapshot A... No gate in snapshot B. In snapshot 3, we have a gate now. I think this is the best way to start learning to use the HX Stomp. Just get to work building presets on here. You can then plug into HX Edit, which is really straightforward to use, and export your presets and import presets import IRs, um, essentially HX Edit works more or less like this. Uh, it's quite a powerful piece of software, um, very powerful unit for its size and for the money, but that's where I would get started with this. Now on to the video to other things that I think you should know. Let me know if you want me to drop start here into the folder by the way. So the first thing to say is that when we talk about blocks we are talking about these things and we have eight of these in the HX Stomp. Now these can be effects, amps, delays, send and returns, and those sorts of things, volume pedals. Um, models are within these, so if you, you've got a few views, if we're in this edit view, um, when you press this button, you can bypass them. When you press this button, you go to the list, uh, and you've got kind of favorites, are your first on the list, and then beyond that, you've got kind of your other bits and pieces. Um, so within, say, modulation, you've got your models. And these, actually, a lot of them correspond with real-life things as well. Um, you've got stereo versions, mono versions, and legacy versions. Legacy models are always stereo, I believe. Um, the general rule is that if you want to maintain a stereo path, you need to use the stereo block. And that also true that an amp model always collapses things to stereo so there's no point in putting stereo things before an amp model unless you have two amp models uh, and then the other thing to know is that generally the 
single cab will collapse things to mono. The dual preserves stereo signal paths. Uh, so some things that you probably need to know. Um, the preset, you know, you have multiple presets. So we've got banks uh, of three presets is how it's kind of arranged here. And it's relatively easy to update it. What you need to do is go to the line6.com forward slash software and download HX Edit there is how I would do it and download the latest version of HX Edit and then once you've got the latest version of HX Edit it will prompt you to update your actual modeler and don't unplug it whilst you're doing that that's a, a surefire way to disappoint yourself so this button here view we have kind of two key views we've got this one which is our play view here is like the view that you would use when you're actually gigging um, and you see if you press across here we have kind of stomp view where we can assign different parameters to these stomps and we've got tap and tuner there by default we've got preset view also with tap and tuner uh, we've got preset kind of uh, switching between them this one's going up and down preset this one is switching so you've got three presets along there and then we've got snapshot view which is the one that I use we'll come on to what snapshots are later but yeah you can toggle between this is our edit view where we can kind of edit our preset and um, we've got as I say eight blocks which can be whatever you want to build them I'd suggest to start with like you would in real life so you'd go you know drives and stuff in front of the amp and typically I like to use our stereo delays and reverbs after the cab as I say for the reason that the cab generally collapses things to mono the other options you've got in here by the way are you can run in an amp and cab formation or just amp just preamp just cab I tend to like to run just an amp and then a cab after it what this means is that we can easily switch in an IR or easily switch in another cab without changing our amp settings so it's good practice I think to start building presets where the amp and the cab are decoupled so that you can easily make changes and adjustments and drop in IRs if you want to you can't use an IR if you're uh, in the amp and cab combined kind of mode. So yeah, you can switch between foot switch modes like this. If you press action and page together, you get to your tuner, uh, which is obviously the most important item on the HX stomp. This volume obviously controls your master. Other places that you need to be aware of that you can control volume though, um, here the channel volume aspect of the amp model is basically like a fader this doesn't change the tone as much the master volume changes things like the power amp sag and all these kind of parameters and adds clipping another place where you can do this is the level in the cab block this is kind of pure doesn't affect tone um, or you can do things like here on the output main left and right you can change the level another thing to know is that we've got a parallel path here so you can move any block or any number of blocks as well down to the parallel path you just press action and then select path B um, and then you can see you've got a split here which can be a variety of different splits and then you've got a join and to move these you press action and move them uh, these paths are both stereo so uh, that's something to bear in mind you've got like left and right on each part so you see that there uh, if you wanted to get rid of this path you just kind of get rid of the things that are on it you can also set this like so um, if we move this join to path B this path here could go out of our send see here we can send it out through the send left and right um we could send it out as mono or stereo you know we've got quite a flexible little unit here for its size um and again to join that back up just path a and equally if we do that we get to path a come out of this edit view something to bear in mind that if as you're building your preset you want to assign something to a foot switch select the block that you want and then you can capacitive touch 
assign block to foot switch. We could assign two things to this foot switch if we want. So we can just go select another block. And you can see you can either replace that or merge. If we select merge, I was too slow. You see now that it will say you can cycle between what's actually assigned to a foot switch in this way. Um, and that will turn them both on or off. You could equally, if you press uh, this button here in edit view, bypasses blocks. So you could do this um, and you can then have a thing which is like it's switching one on and one off, quite powerful in that way. And if you wanted to clear that assignment, you go here, press these two buttons together. This is in the bypass assign menu. We could turn the attack switch to none, attack synth, and then here. And this is another way that you can set up these assignments. So you could just come out of here, bypass assign, and select which block you want to be on here. And this is without the capacitive foot switching, if that makes sense. Something that you'll want to be aware of is that so things like delay blocks can either be set in milliseconds or they can be assigned to the tap tempo. Um, and if you want to change your tempo manually, you can capacitive touch here and cycle through the BPM. But if you just press in this button, you can switch between the time parameter being connected to the tap tempo or in milliseconds. That's quite powerful. So, you know, like this. Pretty cool. That's the same for like modulation and any sort of time based effect. There are a few ways to kind of hook it up, but for me, the main way that I use the HX Stomp is I just plug the guitar in and these two outputs go straight to my audio interface. And I use this direct, basically, for most jobs. Um, I'm not a four cable method guy, but in the manual, there's plenty of stuff about four cable methods. The other thing you could do, you can use the HX Stomp um, with an amp as well as going direct. You know, you could just send uh, certain aspects uh, so if we go here, clear this block and bring something like the send and return mono here, send left. If we put this down on path B, then what we can do is move this here and say anything that you had before. Just move this across again. Anything that happens before this send will go to our amp. And then we could turn off the dry through as well. If you we turn that down, then basically it will stop here and that will send to our amp without affecting the rest of our direct signal. The other thing, bear in mind, when you press action in this edit view, you've got some options like copy block, paste block, clear block, clear all blocks, um, and snapshot bypass. I'll come on to that in a minute. But for instance, if you want to start from scratch, you can do like that and so what I might do is just build this is how I would build a preset just start one block at a time um, cabs I'd put separately uh, then in the cab block you've got different settings different mics I like to start off with everything close mic as a starting point and reflections these are kind of the sound of early reflections in the room like mic reverberations basically room sound so yeah as I say after the cab I go for stereo reverbs generally uh, glitz is quite an easy one to use I'll just show you some other things um, different models use different amounts of DSP you should be aware of this so for instance if you use things like the Cosmos Echo, uh, you start to see that certain combinations are greyed out. This means that you're, you know, not, you don't have sufficient DSP to be able to run, for instance, two Cosmos Echoes in this particular preset. Um, there is a Ben Vesco DSP allocations chart, and that can give you some really helpful kind of knowledge for knowing which combinations are going to be more possible like you see for instance the gray flander is not available here so if you have it set in your mind that you for sure want certain things within your preset you have to be um, conscious about what is using 
more DSP and maybe make choices and prioritize for instance if it's really important to you that you have two amps in the preset then you're going to have to make concessions about having reverbs or delays in there so it's, it's more about kind of thinking about what do I actually want here um, then for instance I might put a drive pedal in at the start and in this way you can get results fairly quickly so Cosmos Echo I'm going to assign to this foot switch as I showed you earlier and it goes green and I'm going to assign the Timmy to this foot switch and there you see then I can foot switch in in these blocks here you'll see a trails option this means that when you bypass this your trails will be maintained if you have trails off you get hard stop the other thing to know about is this headroom so this is essentially giving you more kind of headroom on your delay block so that you don't potentially clip the kind of virtual preamp in there I tend to set this up anytime I've got it as an option I set it as high as possible to get the cleanest repeats okay then another thing to bear in mind is that if you're in this mode here you can press these buttons together to swap them uh, so I think you just touch them together you can swap them around in that way pretty powerful and equally in the snapshot mode you can copy snapshots uh, so if you press them together like that you can kind of swap them around or if you long press them you can swap them as well so again that's quite a powerful thing um, in terms of saving you just press these two together and then this knob here changes your location for where you're going to save it and this knob here changes the character and this knob changes where the cursor is um, you can delete and insert on the next page another thing to bear in mind is if you press this view button and you're in uh, play mode this one here does nothing this one here shows the presets and you can reorder presets in here um, you can I think cycle through snapshots on here as well and it shows you the MIDI command for getting to this uh, preset that you're on um, pretty cool and we can also rename I think snapshots somewhere go into the preset view here and then press action you can rename your snapshot one um, to whatever you like so you could say clean or whatever um, I like to use the actual unit itself for most of my stuff just so that I get more comfortable, more use out of the unit and so you know if I choose to use it on a gig I can do. Here I think unity gain is with the volume all the way up so if you're going in front of an amp or anything like that then that's probably your best bet. Um, the other thing is that this input is quite powerful, we've got a gate here if you want it um, which you can set the threshold and decay for, I tend to use this for higher gain tones, we've got an impedance circuit something to know about that is that some of our pedals have like a an impedance effect where they kind of reduce impedance which has an impact on tone and feel um, by default uh, if you go into your global settings you'll find that there's a preference for this um, at the very end this is the thing auto MZ I think the best option for this is to set it to enabled it by default be on first what this means is that this is effectively like true bypass mode um, there's other videos on this that you may want to check out it's probably not a beginner kind of concept um, as well as there are plenty of other videos out there on each of these kind of things but you can see in the global settings there's quite a lot of different bits and pieces that you may want to get au fait with uh, particularly when you start to get you know into doing slightly more advanced things there's also a command center which in and of itself is super powerful and this is like your way to start kind of thinking about really customizing this thing for yourself 
or starting to get it working in MIDI with MIDI. Um, but yeah, I think those are the, the first things. What I would do if I were you uh, with, with the HX Stomp, if you're new to it, is really start to try to build some presets which are based on um, some things out there that you already know exist. Uh, I like to kind of build tones based around uh, specific amps that I'm investigating or specific effects and in that way I start to learn my way around the unit um, and don't forget that you can set things up to do pretty much different things for every snapshot You know, it's really powerful stuff. Um, read the manual, it's super useful, but what I would suggest first is start to, to just kind of build your bits and pieces. Um, you can use HX Edit, but for me, I like to, to not use it so much. On this split as well, you can kind of pan things. It's just, it is, there's a lot, but I think just get stuck in with it and start building tones and start playing with it. I think you'll find it very enjoyable. I tend to use it, as I say, just direct, not in front of an amp. Um, there are people out there who use it as like an effects box in front of an amp, and it's totally capable of that. Um, and within the global settings, there is uh, this ins and outs page where you can sort of set your input and output levels to be appropriate for whatever you're using it. Check the manual for that. Um, anyway, I hopefully that was like a, a bit of a primer. Leave comments below if you're an HX Stomp user and you've got other tips that you think people should be aware of. I think there's certainly videos out there that should be very helpful for you. Uh, I would just say maybe I've got loads of videos building presets. So if you're new to the HX Stomp, try and follow along. I do it on the unit all the time for that reason with it intended that you can build these things yourself. So um, yeah, I'll catch you in another video soon. And if you've got requests for videos with your Helix, HX Stomp, let me know and I'll be happy to, to do those for you. Um, enjoy your HX Stomp. Cheers.